Joining me now via Skype is a former presidential candidate, Alista Shoyode. Alista, good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Now, it's been over six months where this agreement or discussions have been going on and on the issues of relativity and consequential adjustment, yet it still persists. So is it so difficult to have an agreement on matters such as this? Well, thank you. I think uh, one we have to calculate is the situation in Nigeria seems to change almost every week. And what the government may have expected at the time that they agree with the labor union was surely enough to increase the minimum wage from 18 to about 30,000 and based on that 29% that you're talking about. And I think everybody would agree that Nigeria does not seem to be economically viable as of now due to new different challenges that the country is facing. But nevertheless, a promise is a promise, an agreement has been made, and the government should try as much as possible to honor their part of the agreement. Bear in mind now, this is almost six months since the last time that they met. Uh, but I think uh, this is something that all of us have to take into consideration. And the labor union, surely enough, with all their other partners, to engage the government, not necessarily going on strike, because... Uh, I do not think that would be a viable solution to but, the but, but for them, that seems to be the only language the government understands. Well, uh, there's quite a lot of language that the government is not taking into consideration. So it's not about understanding is the situation really in the country. Nevertheless, let's be realistic as well, that every one of us absolutely need to wages. They need their salaries to leave. Uh, bearing in mind, the cost of living has surely increased. The value of our currency has, uh, has gone down. And so, uh, well, they surely have the right to, to go on strike. And, but it's something that right now in Nigeria, I think we must, make, uh, we must try to find the solution between all the parties. So well, what, can, what direction should they take if not strike? Because they've engaged in this uh, discussion for over six months now. Yes, the discussion still is ongoing. And of course, they have threatened to go on strike around the 16th of this month. Uh, let's take into consideration as well that October happened to be the independence year of Nigeria. That's 59 years of independence. Uh, we cannot be seen to be going backward rather than going forward. I absolutely believe that the leaders of, uh, of the labor union, uh, the Nigeria Labor Union, and their other stakeholders should absolutely sit down with the ministers and let the, let the ministers and the government tell them the reason why they cannot honor an agreement almost six months into, into implementation. And I think uh, the Nigerian people will suffer more. And the government, without any doubt, should try as much as possible to honor the agreement because there are loopholes that should be closed where that money can be raised. Uh, to, to solve the problem. There are many loopholes that can be, that, that can be closed. We, you know that, or you would recall that before now, most of the state governors had said that they wouldn't be able to pay, pay the amount 30,000 Naira. What they were able to pay at the time was about 25,000 Naira. And there has been calls per, for perhaps looking outside the box for, by state governments. Uh, what would be in your opinion, looking outside the box at this time, such that uh, no state is left behind when it comes to fulfilling this agreement? I'm not sure, to be honest, that they have been looking outside the box. Because if they have been indeed looking outside the box, then surely enough now that we, have, we should have had the solution. Outside the box means that uh, there are alternative ways of raising in, uh, revenue within the state. And so maybe this could be the right time as well for the federal government to absolutely allow every state to control their resources within that state, whereby the state can re uh, recoup or find partners, even within the state. For example, there are some states that have so much natural resources in there. We're living hundreds of billions of dollars in our state resources without touching them. Say, for example, the minerals. They are then in so many states whereby if the federal government allows states to control their resources, it means that those states can uh, 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 find partners that are willing to come and explore, that are willing to buy into these uh, minerals, and the state will be able to generate their internally generated revenue. So I think uh, it will be right then, looking outside the box, for state to begin to look for international partners, national partners within the country, whereby we can now begin to sell 
generate and bring investors directly into the state, uh, whereby the, the state will control their resources. And so the federal government should allow the state to, come to do that. And it's not just about saying allow state, because management uh, involves people who have been there before. There All are right. people who are in, uh, that have never done anything before to control any business. All right, Alistair Shoyade, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Joining me now via Skype is a former presidential candidate, Alistair Shoyade. Alistair, it's good to have you join me right now this morning. Now, uh, the, they, a lot of people have said that Labour missed it when the ongoing committee to uh, look at the minimum wage was on. Now, the issue of consequential adjustment should have been infused at that point so that when the president signs the, the, the bill into law, then it, it takes care of everything. What do you say? Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it could be an oversight in the sense that uh, the labor union at that time, bearing in mind that, as you will remember, they have been struggling for a very long time for the increase in the minimum wage. And the last one was in 2011. So with the excitement of, okay, we have finally got an increase of almost 67%, Let's quickly see what happened. You know, sometimes in negotiation, you might not get everything that you're looking for. But so long you are in the positive direction, you quickly accept what it is and then renegotiate later. But again, as they now found out, is that the federal government is not even executing, implementing what has been agreed, which is then one thing that people might say on oversight. But as we are not in the actual negotiation, we do not know if that it was actually presented during the cases. All right, there are, there are comparisons between the public sector and the private sector. When it comes to the minimum wage, a lot of private sector are even paying way beyond the minimum wage benchmark. And uh, it has drawn the attention to the, the laid back or lackadaisical uh, approach to work and working hard by public officials. What do you say to this? Well, surely you know, there, it would be a massive difference between the private sector and a government institution. Uh, as you will know, even the private sector roughly depend on what the people generate from working within the government institution, agencies and the, uh, of similar nature. And the government, surely enough, uh, to be honest, you cannot tell people outside Nigeria, for example, that Nigeria is a poor nation. Nobody would ever believe you. Neither will you tell them that Nigerians are poor. Nobody would believe you. But let's take it into context that uh, where we are now, the labor, of course, talking about they're going to strike on the 16th, if not, is done based on the agreement. We have to look at the, the reality of saying, well, why is the government not able to implement what has been agreed? One of the solutions surely could be that the state needs to look inward in generating internally uh, generated revenue, whereby the, the state would be have the capacity to develop and build and pay the minimum wages, at least we're talking about in comparison, actually, maybe to the 1980s, when the minimum wage was more, less than a thousand naira, and the value at that time is almost two, two to three hundred dollars, compared to today, that the minimum wages that they're looking for is about thirty thousand naira, and in dollar comparison is less than one hundred and fifty dollars. All right, so, Alistair, uh, let, let me interrupt you here. Let me interrupt you here, sorry, before I let you go. Uh, what is going on now between the government and the uh, labor union, organized labor when it comes to negotiation? Some people say this is not about negotiation. This is just politics because when it comes to the figures and, and benching it against uh, the standard of living and all of that, it is not difficult after they've met several times to agree. But it seems it is politics at this time. What do you say? Well, if this politics is meant that all the parties involved in the negotiation were all playing politics, let's take into consideration that at the time of the agreement, it just may be the window to the, to the last election in the country. So one can take that as well. They play politics with it and they negotiate it and the labor union felt that they achieved what they're looking for, even though it's not complete. And the politicians felt that, well, let's offer them something in order for them to be quiet so that we can go through the process. Now, surely enough, everybody is feeling the pinch, but they are looking at the bigger picture, Nigeria and the government should be able to generate and find where that revenue is or where that income is so that they can implement what they have promised the people. Without that, really, Nigeria will suffer more and we do not really need strike. It will cost the country quite a lot for people not to go to work. It will affect uh, the private sector, it will affect the public sector, it will affect a lot of things. All right. Uh, labor unions have said at one time or the other that 
the only language that government understands and tries to, uh, you know, re re reconsider its position is strike. And that is what they have decided to, to fix now against October 16. Do you think this is the final solution to this issue now? Well, it may not be the final solution. Uh, actually, uh, going through the motion now, you will remember probably around the same period last year, the labor union were on strike and they plan to extend that strike longer than normal. Now, again, we're back into another year and the same thing is looming. There is somebody in the system that is not honest with the situation and they're not telling people the right thing and they're not agreeing to what they have promised to do. I think the federal government really and truly needs to go back and examine all the process of the negotiation. As I say, it's not a, it's not about rocket science to, to calculate that the Nigerian people need more than that so to, for a decent living. If you want to break it down, you can find out that that's just about 30,000, about 1,000 naira a day uh, for a living. And of course, uh, we have a country that is blessed with a lot of natural resources. But it doesn't matter if you have all this thing and you do not know how to use it, how to refine it, then you will suffer. So our prayer is, while the strike should not be uh, a final thing for the, from the labor union, let the government quickly sit down and find a solution to this. All right, Alistair Shode, thank you very much for talking to us on TVC Breakfast. Well, joining me now via Skype is former presidential candidate Alistair Shoyodi. Alistair, good morning and thank you for joining us on TBC Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. Now, the NLC president, Ayuba Waba, says all he wants is a decent uh, payment or decent wage for workers. And there has been clamor for minimum living standard. No more people are saying that they, we shouldn't be talking about minimum wage anymore, looking at uh, the country that we are now and how things have moved across the world. What do you make of this? And how should they push for uh, a decent wage for workers? Well, thank you. Uh, one thing that we have to agree is indeed the world has been moving and there have been in many places they've been moving in the right direction according to their national policy. In Nigeria, bear in mind that the last uh, minimum wage increase was in 2011. So it is right for us as well to talk about it in order for us to catch up with the international community. Surely enough, uh, as has been agitated over the last six months or so, that the Nigerian government has not yet implemented the agreement between them and the unions. And I think it is right for the union, without any doubt, to demand that such an agreement needs to be implemented, needs to be followed in due course, and it should be done uh, according to them within a reasonable time. But six months definitely is a, is a long time. And then the question that we need to ask is, why is the federal government not implementing what has been agreed between them and the trade unions? There could be an issue of economic situation, which we know the global market is definitely facing. But what has been agreed needs to be honored for the benefit of those people, for the benefit of the millions of Nigerian workers. Now, October 16th is uh, just some days away, and uh, some have said there shouldn't be, the strike is, shouldn't be the way forward. What would you expect from the NLC or organized labor at this time uh, in discussing or moving forward from this point? Well, uh, they have already indicated the day that they <coughs> plan to go on strike in the country. Uh, there is no doubt that, that that's their plan, and we have heard from other members of the different uh, part of the unions talking about that there won't be any warning, they're just going to implement it. But I think for the benefit of more than 100 million Nigerians, the, the federal government really needs to make sure that they do not go on strike. Already people are suffering, uh, let's be realistic uh, about it. And when they go on strike, the economy will be affected. Um, many more people will find a cause for justifying that the Nigerian labor definitely need an, an, an immediate implementation of the minimum wage. And in consideration as well, we're just talking about 30,000, which the Nigerian government across the whole federation should be able to raise because many states, in fact, almost every state in Nigeria has abundant natural resources that we just need to utilize and begin to generate the much needed investment, much needed money that is needed in the country. Now, you spoke about um, the investment and talk, talked about uh, perhaps resources that states have, but some would say that uh, looking at uh, the system which we run, um, the, on the exclusive list, uh, states do not have access to all of these resources. 
Are you talking about restructuring in that aspect? Well, yeah. Uh, the funny thing is uh, when you use the word restructuring, quite a lot of people has a, has a different understanding of what the word restructuring is, which is alluded to the situation that many have used it in a wrong presentation. And so let's maybe try to find a different word to restructuring, that indeed there are states that have the resources. And if we want to lead, even from the federal government, some of the senior executive of uh, elected officers and has indicated that the state should be able to control their resources. And this is one thing as well, from my own perspective, that I've been talking about over the last years, that indeed the state should be able to control their resources. The, the government needs to allow them because when it is controlled, there is a possibility that every state at least can contribute to the center, be it 30 percent, be it 40 percent. And here we're talking about 30,000, which is roughly maybe 60, 60 pounds a month. Let's be realistic. Nigeria should be able to afford it because we have, we are yet to unearth billions of dollars worth of natural resources that exist in Nigeria. I mean, look at the global community. People are moving away from oil and gas and many industries or many nations will more or less abandon it completely in the next decade. Nigeria has got the opportunity. We have the resources away from oil and gas to allow the state, be it the local government, the 774 local government to generate enough revenue to take care of the wages, not just wages, people will actually have a decent living when we allow them to do it. The question is, will we allow it? Will the National Assembly allow that this to happen? For the benefit of the Nigerian Union, for the benefit of the trade, we should allow such thing to happen immediately so that our country, Nigeria, can indeed move forward. And we know we have the capacity, we have the human resources, and we have the human capital that is needed. And I guess that's why maybe the trade union are talking about if the implementation is not done, they may likely go on strike on the 16th of, of this month. But we hope that the federal government can sit down with them to find a solution for the benefit of Nigeria and for the benefit of driving investment into the country. Alistair Shoyode, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you.